My name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number three. Day Day 3, we are on page number 149, make sure the book is in front of you, turn to page 149, you're going to pick up from the very first problem that you see there on that page, number 20, number 20. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it up to you as usual to, leave, to read the problem in its entirety yourself. Here's what it says, the gist of it, the nub of the problem, we are told that we are, that we are, the person has traveled at the rate of at the rate of 32 miles per hour so this person has made a journey and that was their average speed we also told that the fuel burned fuel was burned at the rate of at the rate of 24 gallons per hour and the question is simple, the question is pretty straightforward, the question simply is what was the mileage, how many miles did, did this person get per gallon of gasoline, how many miles did this person get per mile, uh, per, 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 per gallon of gasoline that was burned, in other, in other words what was the mileage, so the mileage is simply going to be, we are given, we are given here 32 miles per hour was the speed of the person traveling and they were burning the gasoline at the rate of 24 gallons per hour. That's how fast they were burning the gasoline. As you can see, hours appears at the bottom here, hours appears at the bottom here. It's going to cancel out and we left with miles per gallon. And right there is our answer. If you divide top and bottom by 8, we have our answer. If you divide top and bottom by 8, eight 32 has 4 8s and 24 has 3 8s. There you go. That's our answer. We were getting four thirds of a mile per gallon. Boy, I don't know what he was driving, but that's not a very good gas, uh, gas mileage, is it? That's it, that's the answer. The answer is four thirds, and that will be D. Answer choice D. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Let's move on to the next one. We are told we made a round trip. Just hold on, I didn't get my where is the thing you ready? We were told in the next problem, or rather we are told, not we were, we are told that we made a round trip. We made a round trip. So we make a round, we're going to make a round trip, let's say from, let's say from A to B, we're going to go from A to B, and then we're going to come back from B to A, we're going to come back. But we have not finished our journey, again read the problem yourself, I'm not going to put it, the entire problem verbatim because it's too much. On the way back we have only traveled 10%, we have only traveled 10%. We only travel 10%. We are up to here. We are up to here. We, we have not traveled the remaining 90% of the distance on the way back. The question simply is, what percentage of the trip is completed? What percentage? What percent of round trip is completed? But the simplest, the quickest, the easiest, the most economical way here is to plug in some nice number, some nice number that is easy to deal with when you're dealing with percentages, and a nice number to plug in whenever you're dealing with percentages is 100. Let's pretend, let's pretend that it was 100 miles, let's pretend it was 100 miles from A to B. If it was 100 miles from A to B, then so far we have only traveled 10 miles. We still have 90 miles to go, but the question is, what percentage of the, what percentage of the round trip have we finished? Well, it's very easy. We have traveled 100 miles going, going to B. We have traveled another 10 miles coming from B so far. So 
So we have traveled 110 miles for a total of 200 miles because 200 miles is a round trip and we want it in terms of percentage. Since we want it in percentage, we need to multiply that by 100. Are you with me so far? Let's divide top and bottom by 100. This 100 is going to go away and two zeros are going to disappear. 11 divided by, uh, rather 110, 110 divided by 2, 110 divided by 2 gives us 55 percent. The person has traveled, the person has finished, 55 percent of their round trip, 45 percent is still left to go. Let's do number 22. Number 22. It says that from from 2000 to 2003, these are these are number of employees, number of employees. In 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 a, in a given firm, the number of employees from 2000 2000 to 2003, we were told that it was up by a quarter. And then from 2003 to 2006, the number of employees in this firm was down by a third. With me so far? So we are told that in a, in, in a certain firm, this is number 22. It says from 2000 to 2003, the number of employees at a certain company, you see as a certain firm, the number of employees from 2000 to 2003 went up by a quarter, or 25%, and in the following three period, from 2003 to 2006, the number of, number of employees went down by a third. We are also told, we are also told that the number of employees, the number of employees in 2006 is equal to 100. So the question simply is, what, how many employees did we have to start out with in 2000? Here's what we're going to do. Pay, pay very close attention here. Very, very close attention. Let's learn, let's learn to take charge of the exam. Let's learn to take the charge of the exam. Put yourself in the driver's seat. If you listen to what they say, if you listen to what you say, which is they had 100 employees in 2006, and if you start from here, that's the end part. It's very difficult to start from there and way up, build, our, build our way up. It's much easier to start from 2000 and build our way from 2000 to 2003 and then from 2003 to 2006. It's much easier to go forward than it is to come backwards. Do you understand? So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our solution. Here's our solution. Listen, listen very carefully. Simply, simply ignore, simply ignore what they say. Simply ignore what they say, just ignore this part. Okay, watch what happens. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that there were 100 people in 2003. We're just going to pretend, you understand? We're just going to pretend that there were 100 people in 2003. Why 100? 100 because it's much easier, it's very easy to figure out a quarter of 100. So here, here's where the story is going to go. Okay, so here's what it is, 2000, watch what happens, 2000, 2003, and 2006. Don't worry about the fact that we are ignoring what, what was to, told us, we are not going to ignore it completely, we are going to come back to it at the end. You understand, let's keep it in abeyance. Let's just keep this part in abeyance. If you're going to pretend that there are 100 people, if they were going to pretend that there are 100 people in 2000, in 2003, because we are told the number of employees went up by a quarter, they must have 125 employees in 2003. Are you with me so far? The following year, we are told, not, not the following year rather, but the following three year period, the following three year period for 2003 to 2006, the employees went down by one third. Okay, pay attention. It went down by one third, which means whatever the number of employees we had, in 2003, in 2006, we only have two thirds left. Are you still with me? Okay, keep listening. It's very important that we pay attention. As you can clearly see, the 125 does not divide nicely into three, does it? Don't worry about it. Don't cry about it. Don't make a fuss about it. Just adjust it. Just make adjust your posture. Adjust your posture as you go along. So let's let's adjust it. Okay, watch what happens. Let's let's pretend that there were 300 people in 2000. 
And if there were 300 people in 2000, the following year it could be three times. In other words, multiply everything by three. Multiply everything by three, what, which what happens? There we go. Because our problem was, our problem was, we were unable to divide 125 by three, wasn't it? But now, we can certainly divide 125 times three by three. Very easily, of course. There you go, we're done. Still with me? Which means, which means that based on the work that we have done, based on the work we have done, if, if we started with 300, if we start with 300, we'll end up with 250. From 300 to 250 is where we're going to end up. Are you with me? But we did not end up with 250. The problem tells us that we, if we, in 2006 we only had 100 people. So let's take care of it. Now, oh, I erased the two words that I wrote down a second ago. Not in advance. We'll come back to these two words. If you're interested, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, I'll tell you where to find these two words and learn the, learn these two words. There are vocabulary videos on my on my channel. And in addition to simply working on the math part, I would like you to work on your vocabulary, improve your vocabulary, learn the words that uh, that that are likely to appear on the exam. Do you understand? We'll come back to that in a second. So now let's set it up as a ratio problem. Let's set it up as a ratio problem. Let's put down, it doesn't matter which one you put on the top, 2000 to 2006 is what we're interested in. We started out with 300 and we finished with 250. The question is, the question is, how much, what number will we finish with, or rather what number could, could we have started out with, what number could we started out with if we in fact finished with 100. Because the problem tells us that we finished with 100. We, uh, we are told that in 2006 we only had 100 employees. We did not have 250. So simply set it up as a ratio problem and solve for x. Because that ratio has to hold, obviously. Let's do it together. We'll pick up some speed now. Cross multiply, isolate the x. So x would equal 300 times 100. 300 times 100 over 250. So far so good. Divide top and bottom by 10. If you divide top and bottom by 10, 0 is going to go away. Now divide top and bottom by 25. If you divide top and bottom by 25, 25 is going to go away. And the 100 is going to become 4. Voila, there we go. We have our answer. Our x must be 30 times 4, 120. 30 times 4. There we go. That's what it is. We must have started out with 120. And if you like, we can verify it. It's not that, easy. It's not that difficult. To verify it, it only takes a few seconds. Let's verify. Shall we very quickly, we're going to verify it. So, we were told that we finished with 100. We just found out that in that case, we must have had 120. So if you start with 120 and if we follow what we are told, we better finish with 100. Let's see what happens. So if you start with 120, the next year it went up by a quarter. Well, if it went up by a quarter, we had 120 to begin with. Half of 120 is 60, a quarter would be 30. So quarter would be 30. In other words, in 2003, they had 150. The following year, well, I keep saying following year, but you understand the following period, 2006, we were told that it was it went down by a third. What is a third of 150? Of course, third of 150 is 50. A third of 150 is 50, so we finished with 100, which is exactly what the problem told us. It works. The answer is 120. We just verified it. Let's do 23. That's 223. Let me get this out of the way before I erase them again. A little while ago, what I said is, and a little while ago, about five minutes or so ago, I said is that make sure the book is in front of you and make sure that you read the problem yourself because I do not bother to put down the problem in its entirety. I just put down the gist of the problem. I just put down the nub, as I, as I, as I called it. The nub of the problem. Nub of, nub of something is simply the gist, the central idea, the theme, the main points. I do not put it down, put down the problem in its entirety. I just, we just put down on the blackboard the nub of the problem. We learned this word, in case you're curious and in case you're interested in improving your vocabulary, as I said, and learning in other words, I'll tell you which day we learned it. Just type in GMAT, just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day 11, day 11, and the video will pop right up, watch the video and improve your vocab vocabulary. When did we learn about abeyance? Just give me one second, I'm looking. If it takes me too long, then I'm just going to ignore it. But I know we learned it. I can't find it. I'll have to tell you next time.
Oh, there you go, day nine. Day nine. Again, just simply type in in the search box GMAT vocabulary words, day nine, and learn it. Enough of, enough of that. Let's move on to 23. Problem number 23. Problem number 23 tells us, or rather asks us, which statements, which statement must be true. Make sure you pay attention. Make sure you pay attention. It is must be true, not maybe. Which, so which statement must be true about about the mean, about the mean and the median of five consecutive numbers. Con five consecutive integers. They have to say integers. They cannot simply say numbers uh, because that that could be tricky. They're whole numbers. So let's look. Let's look at the statement that they given to us. Let's look at the statements that are given to us and then we'll, we'll worry about one by one. The first statement says, the first statement says that the average, average of these five number has to be, is one of the integers. Is it true the average of these five integers would have to be one of these five integers just because they have five consecutive integers? Let's find out, shall we? Make up five consecutive integers. It doesn't matter which one it is, just make up three, four, five, six, and seven. And because they are equally spaced, the average of these five numbers is the middle number, five. It's, it's five because four is one less than five, and six is more, one more than five. They negate each other. It's, the average is five because three is two less than five, and seven is two more than five. Again, they negate each other. The average is five. But as you can see, if the average is five, then that statement is true. The average is average is one of these integers because the mean is 5 and mean is one of those 5 numbers. So first statement is correct. Second statement says that the median median is also one of these integers. Which it is because median is the same thing. Because they are consecutive integers, the mean and the median is the middle number. The both the mean and the median are the same exact thing. So the second statement is also true. They're going to say, tell us that uh, they are going to tell us that the median equals mean. Of course, median equals means. We just said it. Third statement is also true. The answer is E. The answer is E. All of these three statements are going to be true if you have five consecutive integers. You understand? Or for that matter three consecutive integers or seven consecutive integers as long as you have odd number of inti consecutive integers it has to be odd because if it's even number of integers then the mean would be the average of the middle two and that will that will, uh, that will ruin the whole story as long as you have odd number of consecutive integers then in that case the mean and the median is going to be the middle number and they, they're, because they're both the same they're equal and therefore it will also be one of those five numbers, the mean and the median. Let's go to 23, or rather 24. In number 24, in number 24, we are told that we have 16 coins. 16 coins. We have 16 coins. Made up of dimes and quarters. Dimes and quarters. For those of you who might be watching, who might be watching outside the U.S., dime is what we call ten cents, and quarters are twenty-five cents. Quarter of a dollar. We are further told that the total value, total value, is two dollars and thirty-five cents. And if you're curious. Five cents is what we call a nickel. Nickel, dime, and a quarter. And I believe those, and, and the penny, of course. I was going to say those are the only three coins we have, and the penny, of course. Okay, so total value is two dollars and two dollars and thirty-five cents. Question simply is, how many, how many quarters do we have? How many quarters do we have? Based on the fact, based on the fact that uh, we have some change in our pocket, we know the change is made up of exclusively of quarters and dimes. 
we also know that it's total of two dollars and thirty five cents based on those two facts fact that it is two dollars and thirty five cents when we counted it based on the fact that we just have quarters and dimes and nothing else how many quarters must we have how many unknowns do we have we know that the total amount of money that I have in my pocket is two dollars and thirty five cents what how many unknowns do we have we have two unknowns we have to find out how many dimes there are and how many quarters there are even though the problem does not ask for a number of dimes it asks for quarters but those are two unknowns and because we have two unknowns here the number of quarters and number of dimes because we have two unknown quantities we must have two independent equations otherwise we can't take care of it so can you see where the two, 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 two equations are two independent equations do you understand what independent equation means for example, for example, if I tell you, if we tell, if we told you that x plus y is equal to five, and then you take the equation and multiply it by three, and tell me that three x plus three y equals fifteen, we can't use these two equations to solve for x and y because these two equations are not two equations; it's one and the same equation. The, this second equation is the same as the first equation, just three times the amount. These two equations are said to be not independent of each other because second equation is derived from the first equation, or the other way around. But we have to have two independent equations. Do you see the two independent equations here? Well, the first one is right here. We have 16 coins, and the coins are made up of quarters and dimes. There you go. The number of quarters, the number of dimes has to equal 16. That's our first equation. Where is the second equation going to come from? Second equation is going to come from the fact that we know that the total amount that we have is $2.35. So if we had if we had three quarters, if we had three quarters, then we would have 3 times 25 would be, would be the amount of money that we have. If we have 7 quarters, then 7 times 25 would be the amount of money we have. If we have, if you have 10 quarters, it will be 10 times 25. Therefore, if we have Q quarters, it will be 25 times Q, the amount of money, the value of it. And similarly, if we have 2 dimes, that's 20 cents. If you have 7 dimes, that's 70 cents. If you have B dimes, is D times 10. d times 10 or 10d is the same thing. This is how much money we have. This is expressed in terms of cents, not the dollars, not like that. It's expressed in terms of cents. How many cents do we have in, in, in quarters? 25 times q. How many, q, how, many, how many quarters we have? Times 25, that's how, that's how many cents we have. How, how many cents do we have in dimes? Well, how many dimes we have? Times 10, that's how, that's how many cents we have in dimes. And that has to add up to 235. It is no longer 2.35 because we express it in, in cents. The second thing we have to notice is that as you can see 25 is a multiple of 5, 10 is a multiple of 5, 235 is a multiple of 5. Just divide the entire equation by 5 to make our life simpler. If you divide the entire equation by 5, in other words divide this by 5, divide that by 5 and divide this by 5. Divide the entire equation by 5, 25 divided by 5 will give you 5 quarters plus 10 divided by 5 is going to give you 2 dimes. And let's divide 235 by 5. How many 5 does 2 have? 2 doesn't have any 5. 2 doesn't have any 5. It's too puny to have any 5. What, the, what happens to the 2? The 2 goes and knocks on the door, the next door. He's, he knocks on the door and says, Would you join me please, Number Mr. 3? And the 3 joins the 2 and becomes a 23. 23 has 4 5s. 4 5s are 20. After we take away 20 from 23, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 35. And 35 has 7 3s. Well, so this is our second equation. This is our second equation. There is our first equation. We're going to erase everything else. We don't need everything else. We just need our two equations. We have them. We don't need any of that. And we don't need any of this. This is our one equation. That's our second equation. Here we have two d's. Why don't we multiply this equation by 2? Multiply the entire equation by 2. In other words, take, take this side and multiply it by 2. And take that side and multiply it by 2. 2 times q plus 2 times d would have to equal 32. Let's put this equation right underneath here. Actually, let's put it a little bit higher. 5q plus 2d equals 47. As you see, 5q plus 2d equals 47. And let's put this equation underneath it. So we have 2q's plus 2d equals 32. Let's subtract, let's subtract the second equation from the first equation. I'm looking for my cap. 
by first equation and second equation, I mean I'm referring to this. I'm referring to this equation as the first statement. I'm referring to this as the second statement. Second equation rather. What do we find? I didn't mean to make the arrow so 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 long. Here we have positive five q, positive two q, and since we're going to we, since we are about to subtract it, since we are about to subtract second equation and first equation, we have to change the sign. Change the sign before you forget it. There we go. 5q minus 2q is going to give us 3q. And positive 2q and a negative 2q, they're going to cancel each other out, which was the whole point, which means 3q equals 7 minus 7 minus 2 is 5, and 4 minus 3 is 1. There you go. 3q equals 15, which means q must equal 3. We have 3 quarters. We have 3 quarters. That's all. And how many how many dimes do we have? Well, we can figure out dimes from here. We knew we knew the number of quarters plus number of dimes has to equal 16. That was given to us. Q we Q we are claiming is 3. If Q is 3, if we have 3 quarters, we must have 13 dimes. And we can very very quickly verify whether or not it makes sense. Let's verify it on the top. We can very quickly verify it whether or not it makes sense. We are claiming that we have three quarters. If we have three quarters, we must have three times 25 cents. And we are claiming that we have 13 dimes. If we have 13 dimes, it will be 13 times 10 cents. 75 cents plus 130 cents. If you add 130 to it, what do you suppose we should get? We should get $2.35 because that's what the problem told us. Five. And 2035 cents is not what we're getting. Oh, I made a mistake. See, that's why, that's for a that is precisely the reason why you must check your work if the time allows you. It's the call that you have to make. It's an, it's an insurance. I was going to say it's like an insurance. It's not like an insurance. It is an insurance. Check your work. Checking your work is buying the insurance. It's, it's, I was about to say it's like buying the insurance. It's not like buying the insurance. It is buying the insurance. Insurance against accuracy of your work. And just like any other insurance, you have to pay the premium. The premium here is the time. It's your, it's your call whether or not you want to spend a few extra seconds to check your work. I check my work. It's not adding up. Problem tells us that we should have $2.35. I'm getting $2.05. So I went back and checked my work and I found a mistake. 3Q equals 15. Therefore, Q must equal 5 because 15 divided by 3 is not 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. We have 5 quarters. It changes everything. If we have 5 quarters, if we have 5 quarters, then 16 minus 5, we must have 11 dimes. This is all wrong. This is, this is all wrong. Let's do it properly. Instead of erasing it, let's do it properly. So now we have 5 quarters, 5 times 25. And we have 11 dimes, 11 times 10, 5 times 25 is 125, and 11 times 10 is 110, and now it better add up to 235 like the problem told us it should. We get 5, 3, and 2, voila. Oh, it checks out. It checks out. It is 235 cents. 235 cents we were told the amount of money the person had in, in change, in coins, in, in quarters and dimes. And that's exactly what we find at the end. Tomorrow we'll pick up from number 24. Or rather, that was 24. Tomorrow we'll pick up from number 25 and we'll do the last two problems on that page and move on to the next page, okay? I want to stop right here. It's getting to be too long. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.